Hi guys, my name is Maya Nazareth. I'm the founder of Alchemize Fightwear, Fightwear for the Fierce Female, a women's MMA gear and apparel brand. And today I'm gonna talk to you about how you can start your own athletic wear or clothing business. So I started my clothing business, essentially athletic wear business, when I was 20 years old. I was in university. Um, I think it really kind of started when I was 19. I was just kind of like musing over the idea. I think I even started prototyping, but uh, really I launched when I was 20 years old. Um, and I started it for a couple of reasons. Number one, I really, really, really wanted to be financially free. I wanted to be my own boss. And I knew that from a pretty young age. I knew it, I was always entrepreneurial. Like even as a kid, I was starting businesses and selling jewelry and selling dog treats and doing stuff like that always my whole life. I, I had an eyebrow threading business in college as well, um, which is how I, I made money all through school. Um, and I was also an online English teacher, so I, was making money as a freelancer uh, through school as well. But part of it was my motivation to own my own business and, and be an entrepreneur. And really I had this obsession with being an entrepreneur and working for myself by the time I graduated college, which is not what ended up happening. COVID ended up happening and you know, I just wasn't there yet. And so I'm actually working right now at a branding firm um, and building my dream in the meantime. But I think that I went through a lot of things in year one that I wish someone had told me. I wish that I had kind of a guideline for how to get started, where to go, um, and I didn't. So I'm here to share that with you today. If you're thinking about starting a clothing brand or an athleisure brand or an athletic wear brand, I think the first thing that you need to figure out is why. So for me, it was financial freedom and it was that I had a problem. So I trained Brazilian Jiu Jitsu been training for about five years and there's like 20% of people that train jujitsu are women. And so the gear is, is made for men and I was really struggling to find specifically no gi gear that I wanted to wear. I would go to training and I just didn't feel cute. I didn't feel sexy. I didn't feel like it fit my body right. It's not like you're trying to attract attention, but you just want to feel good about yourself when you go into the gym. Um, and I didn't, feel that way in the gear that I was wearing. And also there was like some functional issues. So I was wearing men's gear because the women's gear was just ugly and the men's gear was flying over my head while I was training, just too loose on my waist, wasn't flattering and I wanted to do something better. So I decided that I was gonna solve this problem and make women's MMA gear and I didn't know where to start. You know, I really had no idea where to begin. I don't have a background in fashion. I wouldn't even consider myself a, a very fashionable person. I have like very specific taste, but I'm not particularly fashionable. Um, and so I just started reading, you know, I started reading books, I started listening to podcasts. I would listen to podcasts all the time about business building and about how to start a clothing business and, and all of that, audiobooks about it um, while I was at my job working. And then one day I just started designing. And so I had like little sketches that I was working on, but eventually I hired a designer off of 99 designs. There's other freelancing platforms that I think are better like Upwork or Fiverr, um, a little bit cheaper as well. Um, or you could go directly to a designer that you found on Instagram, which is actually what I do right now. Um, but first I went to 99 designs, worked with the designer there to design a rash guard that I loved. A rash guard, if, if you are not in the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or wrestling or MMA space is a garment that's basically made to protect you from getting mat burn while you're training like rug burn. Um, and also to protect you from any kind of like skin diseases on the mat, like ringworm or, or that kind of thing. So I, kind of embarked on this journey of designing one. I got the graphics done and then I needed to figure out how I was even gonna make this piece. And I didn't know anything about it. Um, so I started looking for manufacturers and I realized I needed a tech pack. And a tech pack is basically a document where you keep all of the specific information and the technical details of your garments. So that's everything from the specific colors you're gonna use to the construction of the garment, the type of stitching, the type of fabric, the type of printing that's gonna be on the garment and everything kind of in between. Um, it was a lot of work for me to come up with that first tech pack. I didn't know what I was doing. And you know, when you start something like that, you just don't know what you don't know. And so I really struggled for a while to figure it out, but eventually I figured one out and sent it to a bunch of different manufacturers. I found manufacturers um, through Alibaba. So I immediately started working with overseas manufacturers in China and Pakistan. Um, 
Now I'm actually moving a lot of production back to the US. Uh, this is after my first run. I'm actually launching a new line in March of 2021. So I'm really excited about that. Stay tuned. Um, but initially I started working with overseas manufacturers and what I found was you know, it's cheaper, right? It's cheaper per unit. You have to pay pretty expensive shipping, so it's not cheaper in that way. But the quality, you have less control, especially as a small business ordering a minimum order quantity. These manufacturers have a minimum order quantity of say 50 pieces or 100 pieces. Um, ordering a quantity that low, you're a low priority customer for them. And so a lot of manufacturers in china for example don't want to do the kind of like customization or really detailed work that you might ask for um and they'll say oh we can't do that unless we do 10,000 pieces for you and i was running up against that problem a lot and so i'm looking to work with manufacturers in the u.s because i feel that i could have a little bit more control here and you know be involved in the process go to the factory and and that's really what i want i think also the shipping time will be way less uh, which is something that i'm really looking forward to because i mean the sampling process of developing a piece of gear, and I'll get to that in a minute, just takes a really long time when you're shipping it from China and back. It takes like a month there, a month back, like it's just crazy. Um, so anyway, I found a manufacturer. We went through the sampling process. So that's when you send them a tech pack. They create a sample of your garment. They create it without any of like the the internal tags you know the tag on the back of the neck the tag inside the care tag um but they create just a sample garment for you they send it to you um when you're getting it from china it takes about a month or three weeks uh and that's just shipping time not production time um you get the sample and you review it so i tried it on i uh messed with it i like tried to tear it i tested the quality i rolled in it i saw how it felt you know and i made some changes there was i didn't like everything i think in, initially i even changed the fabric um i changed the length i changed how it fit my waist and then i sent them all of my feedback back you don't have to send the sample back they'll just send you a new one but i sent them all the feedback back they created a new production sample for me, sent it to me, and we went back and forth in this iteration process. Sometimes you adjust the colors, whatever you need to adjust to make it perfect. And then eventually they send you a final production sample and they say, this is what we're gonna print, are you okay with it? And then you, uh, they create a whole minimum order quantity or quantity of garments, whatever you ordered. Um, and then you get it and you start selling. What I did was when I got that final production sample, I started taking the photography. So I took the photography and I started creating buzz around the brand. And in the beginning, that's really important. And I would say when you start thinking about creating a brand, you need to think about a couple of things. One, are you solving a problem? So I think that it doesn't have to be a serious problem. Like for me, it is kind of a bigger problem where I'm solving a lack of I'm solving a problem with a lack of gear options out there for women in grappling sports and MMA um, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But it doesn't have to be a problem like that. It could be, I don't know, it, it, I don't know. I think it's better to solve a problem, to be honest. But you need to think about the core of why you're doing it. Are you an artist and you just wanna create amazing streetwear? I mean, that's awesome. You know, you need to think about the kind of vibe you want to get it off and so to do this i would come up with a couple of words that really describe and hone your brand so for us i would say that our design aesthetic is pretty minimal but with some really unique details and beautiful unique pieces like that are really crazy in patterns and that really reflects kind of the jujitsu space um, people like simple minimal gear but also some crazy um pieces once in a while and so i i'm trying to create that um I would say that we have a, our brand, like everything that we do is fierce. Everything that we do is sexy. You know, women want to feel sexy. Women want to feel beautiful. Women want to feel um, strong. And I guess the third word is powerful. You know, I want women when they're wearing my clothes to just feel like, wow, I'm, I'm the shit, you know, like I'm, I'm powerful. I'm badass. I'm on the mat doing something hard every day. And my gear makes me feel that way, you know, or my gear also just doesn't subtract. I'm not just distracted by having to pull it down. I'm not feeling self-conscious. I'm not feeling like my body doesn't look good and, and always adjusting. And women spend so much mental energy doing that. And when you're training, that's the last thing you want to be thinking about. And so I wanted to create gear that just 
didn't leave that as an option, you know, that just made you feel good. Um, so I would think about, you know, what are the core tenets of your brand? What does every piece that you put out, every post that you put out, every everything that comes out of your brand, your packaging, your posts, your copy, your whatever, what does it reflect? And for me, it's ferocity, sexiness, and power. Um, and make sure that you stay strict to those guidelines because that is your brand, you know? Those words, that feeling, that emotion, that vibe, is your brand and your brand is the most powerful thing you have when creating a clothing company. The second thing I would think about is how you're gonna market it. So, you know, you can build the best product, but if you don't market it right, the people won't come. And this is something that I'm still learning and really had to learn in the beginning. I was thinking, you know, if I, if I just kind of post on social media, people will follow, you know? People don't like to follow brands as much unless you're doing something really interesting and really valuable. You also have to find what posts are your thing. So I was doing all of these inspirational posts in the beginning because all about like female, female empowerment and female ferocity and that, that's what the brand is about and we support trauma survivors with, with a donation from every single piece that we sell. And I was posting all about this and you know, I wasn't really growing on social media. It wasn't seeming to resonate with my community. When I started posting about the unique values of my gear, that it was a longer cut, that the seams were cut to flatter your body, that it was flat lock stitching, that it was double sublimated, this, that, and the other thing, the technical specifics of my gear, people took interest. Those posted extremely well, and it's something that I just had to learn through trial and error. And now I know going forward that I still wanna be that motivational voice. I still want to have a brand that's aspirational, but I had to learn that there's a certain type of content that does well for my audience and does well for conversion as well because the people that are buying my gear, that's what they care about. They don't care as much about all of the motivational stuff. So to market your brand, you can do a lot of things. You can post on social media, you need to grow your account, you need to pay for ads. Um, on TikTok right now, you can grow organically really fast, so I would recommend doing that. I mean, what I'm doing right now, making this YouTube video talking about my brand is some kind of marketing as well because you might become interested in me and what I'm doing and, and become interested in my brand as well and, and follow us and maybe you are a woman in martial arts or maybe you just like the gear and wanna support us. Um, so you have to find out different unique ways to, to market yourself. You need to figure out how to get free PR as well. I mean, I was a college student when I started this business. I had no money to do it. Um, and one thing I've really, really struggled with is those minimum mortar quantities from China because 50 pieces, 100 pieces will cost $1,000, $2,000 in the start to finish, the development to the end of the piece. And that was money that I didn't have. So. You need to find creative ways to kind of get around it. And I guess the third thing that I wanna tell you is just be patient, you know, be patient, be consistent, post consistently, speak to your audience, know who your audience is, be a part of your audience, like me as a woman in jiu-jitsu. I understand those needs because I'm one of those people and my friends are those people and I've talked to a lot of people who are women in grappling sports and so I know their problems, I know kind of how they think. I mean, obviously we don't all think the same, but I know our interests, you know? Um, and so be a part of your audience, know your audience, make really an effort to understand what they're consuming, how they think, how you can add value to their lives because if they're gonna consume your content, which I think is the best way to market, you have to add value. You have to, their second is valuable. Their time, their attention is valuable and they have a million options to choose from. And so you need to be someone that offers something unique, whether it's inspiration, aspiration, uh, tips, tricks, techniques. In, in my space, I could be doing jujitsu techniques or self-defense techniques to get some kind of uh, attraction as well. Uh, probably not for the jujitsu community, but I could be doing self-defense because I, I've only been training for, probably not for the Brazilian jujitsu community because I've only been training for five years, but I could do it for the women's empowerment kind of side of my business that maybe doesn't know any jujitsu techniques and would like to learn some some simple self-defense um and i guess the third thing like i said is is just be patient be patient be consistent don't ever give up on your dream if your dream is to be financially free if your dream is to help people i mean that's my dream too i want to help female trauma survivors i want to help women's self-defense initiatives so 
don't ever give up on those dreams, you know? Just keep persisting, keep going, keep making products, keep making your products better. Every single launch is gonna be better. So the first products I made, I made three products. I've been selling them like crazy over the last year. Now I've made some money and now I can launch a whole line and I'm launching a whole line in March. And this launch is gonna be better than the last one. The next launch is gonna be even better than this one. And just keep iterating, keep being better, keep being creative and yeah, just never abandon your why. So anyway, I hope this helps. I hope it was informative, motivational, at least a little bit about the process. If you are if you like this video, like, subscribe, go check out my business, Alchemize Fightwear, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.